a uh, very short introduction about me. So my name is Martin Heuser. Uh, I work as a senior Microsoft 365 engineer for Julian Doki. Uh, we have our headquarters in LA, but I live in Stefa, which is in Switzerland near Zurich. I'm also a very freshly minted uh, Microsoft 365 and Services MVP since February this year. And yes, yeah, some of my favorite technologies are Azure, Microsoft 365, Teams, Power Automate, PowerShell, Graph, uh, basically many different uh, Microsoft technologies. Today, I'm going to talk very quickly about what's the, the problem and what led to my solution or how I uh, built that, how do we deploy it, uh, how does it work, uh, etc. So the, the problem, or maybe I have to note that I work a lot with Microsoft Teams telephony, Teams phone, and obviously this also involves uh, phone numbers. So the phone number management in Teams Admin Center is quite bad. Um, there's no way to manage your direct routing numbers, so you'll, you'll only see the ones which are assigned to users, but there is no like complete list or overview over all your number types. You have very limited search and filter functionalities, no way to get, for example, all Swiss numbers, uh, etc. And you always need to assign a Teams administrator role um, for users to be able to assign and unassign numbers from new users or users who, who left and so on. And of course, there are uh, a couple of third party providers who uh, provide such number management platforms or uh, tools, but they are usually quite expensive. Uh, so I decided to give this a go and, and try on my own to create the automated uh, solution using what we already have in Microsoft 365. For me, that's sometimes kind of a paradox. So uh, it's unbelievable that a, a certain feature is not available in Microsoft 365 because to me as a user, it's just the most logical thing. But on the other, on the, on the other hand, it's truly amazing what we can build or achieve by leveraging uh, the existing Microsoft technology stack to build solutions around a very specific uh, problem. Yeah, that's the, the solution. So in the end, uh, we have a SharePoint online or a Microsoft list. It can be accessed through both uh, interfaces um, where we have uh, all phone number types, uh, including operator connect, calling plans, direct routing. Uh, it reads all the data uh, from Teams PowerShell. Uh, we can get all the numbers from there, uh, except for the direct routing numbers, which are unassigned. But all the other ones uh, are there uh, as well. We can retrieve which number is assigned to which user, etc. And this, in the end, gives us very rich filtering capabilities. So we have uh, multiple columns. We can filter by country, by call, uh, by number type, or is it a user number or a resource account number, etc. And of course, everything is automatically updated by an Azure Runbook uh, when it's all done. So these are the technologies which I used. So we have SharePoint, Azure Automation, PowerShell, the awesome Microsoft 365 uh, CLI developed by the PMP team, which uh, helped me quite a lot uh, to achieve my goal to make it fully automated and also Power Automate Flow to just uh, format the list a, a little bit uh, better. And I really tried my best or uh, yeah, to uh, create the, like a one click or a one script um, deployment. So instead of uh, that, you have to go or read through a very lengthy blog post and create every resource in Azure portal and do all the clicks yourself. I try to make it real simple so that anyone can just download uh, this, this script from, from GitHub and uh, hit enter or run uh, and all the dependencies are installed uh, automatically. So all the, the PowerShell modules which are needed, no JS, uh, it is installed through Winget, and finally, um, uh, Microsoft 365 CLI is installed through NPM, which is the Node Package Manager, and it only takes about five to ten minutes uh, to deploy. Uh, that's until you have your list ready in, in SharePoint Online. There is an environment, a JSON file, which is used to uh, just give uh, a few information about your environment, like tenant ID, the group ID, which is the ID of the team where the, the SharePoint team site um, will be hosted. And finally, the, the list, so you can give it any name you like. And we also specify a couple of things for Azure, where in which resource group or how the resource group should be named, the name of the automation account and the location. When the script runs, um, what is created in Azure, um, there are a couple of resources which are deployed. Uh, I'm going to show you this right in the portal. Uh, as they make this makes uh, it makes it a little bit easier. Um, 
so obviously I don't have time to run through the deployment process uh, in this call because it's a very short amount of time to do the demo, but uh, it's all pre-deployed uh, with the latest version that's available on GitHub. So you can see we have the, the resource group. Uh, we do have the automation account and a couple of ROM books. Um, the reason we have multiple is that uh, basically uh, there is a main run book, which is this one, uh, the team's phone number overview, and then there are some functions which are modularized, like connect to graphs and connect to teams. They are separate functions which are just imported in the main uh, run book, so they can be edited without uh, having to change the code. And this also means we can reuse them for other scripts uh, as well. Also, the Teams module, it's type custom. All the other ones are default. They are added to any newly created automation account, but Teams is imported automatically through the script as well. And finally, we have a couple of variables. Um, for example, uh, the app secret, which is needed and also created by the script, uh, by the and all of our um, direct routing numbers are stored in, in a variable as well. Uh, this is the uh, Azure AD app registration that was created. We can see we do have a secret here, and also all the permissions were added by the script. I'm going to show you in a second how that was done, and all are already uh, pre-consented. The final thing we need to be able to manage Microsoft Dreams through a service principle is to add the Skype for Business administrator role um, to the service principle that's also done by the script. So this is the structure of the repository. Um, there is the environment, Jason and I showed in the presentation. And here's the, the setup script. So uh, I really wanted to do this uh, in a way where you don't have to uh, restart the PowerShell script if you don't have the dependencies. And that was like a, a big hurdle for me at first because uh, anytime I installed Node.js through Winget, uh, it was not available in the path variable. So I had to restart the PowerShell session to become available. So then I found uh, this uh, line of code in the internet, which uh, basically reloads the path variable, um, which means the script can continue without uh, restarting. And I hit the same issue with the Microsoft 365 CLI. So when I was trying to do a login with NPM, Microsoft 365 login, it was not working. Then I found out that I could just change it to NPX, which lets me use the commands um, straight away. And here we can see that the app secret, uh, the, the app ID or the, the app registration is created by the CLI with a secret. And that secret is then um, stored locally in a uh, hashed uh, format. So it's, uh, only my machine and my user account on this particular machine will be able to decrypt it. Um, we will decrypt it before it's uh, uploaded to, to Azure again in an encrypted variable. And here we can see that we also add a service principle for the app registration and that all the uh, required cross permissions are added. So just a couple of things to manage teams as well as uh, sites manage all, for example, to be able to manage the SharePoint sites uh, with Microsoft Graph. Let's go back to the presentation very quickly. Once the script has finished, uh, you basically have a production ready um, deployment. And then the real magic is in the run book itself or in the script. Um, if no SharePoint online list is existing yet, it will create one with the name you defined in the environment, JSON. If you already have one, then no new list will be created and it will only be updated. And uh, it checks for all the values which need to be updated. Uh, if you have acquired new numbers through Microsoft or Operator Connect or whatever, they will be added. Uh, if you release numbers, they will be removed, and it will even assign uh, or try to assign reserved numbers uh, or unassigned numbers. So this is kind of a delegation we can give to users which don't have Teams administrative uh, access, but they can still assign numbers through that uh, list. So let's do a uh, quick demo. I'm going to show you the list which you have here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a number to a user through Teams Admin Center. So uh, just to demonstrate that uh, the list also picks up changes which are not done um, 
by the script itself, which might be done to another script or to another user through Teams Admin Center. Um, then I'm going into the grid view and I want to change the direct routing number of Wendy Rhodes. So I'm going to search for a non assigned direct routing number. Just type in her name here and put that to reserved. Then I want to assign a uh, colleague plan number to another user. That user is called Mike. And one thing to note here is that uh, I'm assigning a uh, Swiss number which starts with plus four one. But that user actually has a wrong usage location in Azure AD. It's uh, set to Germany. So the script will automatically detect that and change the user's usage location based on the prefix of that phone number. Also, I want to remove the number from Bobby. And I can make this. I want to. Uh, change a few numbers we have. So we have a CSV here. This, this is initially used to upload the direct routing numbers. I'm going to run it locally because of the Azure run book queues. We don't run into any uh, queue issues. So, so that saves a little bit of time. I will just change this number from 09 to 99. So that's one removed, one added number. And there is a simple arrival at the beginning of the script. If I set local test mode to true, I can just uh, Execute it locally because there is a, a switch in here which will just import all the functions from my local structure instead of. Uh, so I'm going to run this. It does the login to Graph to Azure. Um, then you can see it's now trying to remove uh, the number from this user. Um, you can see that this user already has a number and it will be replaced with the new number. Uh, it detects that it's a direct routing number. Um, so it will also assign a voice routing policy so that the user can actually make calls. Um, in resources, there is also a country lookup table, which uh, includes prefixes for all the, the countries. And if you have a need to assign uh, voice routing policies, you can just add your voice routing policy name for that specific country here. And if you assign a number from that country, the policy will also be uh, drawn from here, and then uh, the policy can also be assigned. And now it's working on the user Mike, which has the wrong user location, so it will change it in Azure AD. Actually, in Azure AD, it should already be done, but it takes a couple of seconds for Azure AD to sync it over to uh, the Microsoft Teams user object. Uh, so that's changed now to Switzerland. That was changed by the runbook. And then it gives me an output. Um, for all the, the entries which are updated or need to be updated, uh, et cetera. So let's go take a look at the list. Uh, we can see number for Bobby is now unassigned. The user profile stays there because it's not possible to, lead, to delete it via graph. There, the flow will remove it later on, uh, the flow which is connected to that list. Um, we can see number for Mike was assigned, the number for Wendy was changed. Now you saw the flow just uh, it is magic and uh, removed uh, the user profile from, from that number. And we should also see the number 99 here, which we changed uh, here in the direct routing numbers. Uh, so, yeah, that I think that pretty much uh, covered every case. There is maybe one more case uh, where if a user has uh, assignment errors, for example, if the user doesn't have a license, then the status will change to uh, assignment error. So you can go into the list, filter by assignment errors, and manually check them. And but there's also more uh, uh, output available in uh, the the Azure Runbook output. Uh, yeah, let's go quickly, very quickly back to uh, the presentation. So. Uh, yeah, um, we can customize this using Power Automate, like the thing I did with the user profile. There is also more information in my two blog articles articles I wrote about this. Uh, you can just adjust the PowerShell code to anything you like. Uh, you can even add uh, 
additional columns to the list, for example, create a comment field for number reservations, and that uh, column wouldn't get updated by the script uh, if it's not also in the PowerShell code. And you can use uh, webhooks and bots, or for example, if you want users to, if they assign a new number or reserve a new number, and you want to them to be able to uh, do not wait for the schedule, you can just uh, invoke the, the runbook through, through a webhook, so it's pretty cool. Uh, yeah, that's just a quick recap. So we have all uh, a single view for all of our number types. Uh, we have one source of truth for all the numbers, uh, SharePoint list. We have great search and filter capabilities. We can integrate it into Teams. Uh, I can just add the list as a tab here. And it's very easily deployed and also uh, quite inexpensive because you're only built for the run book uh, runtime in minutes per month. Uh, yeah, that's it. Uh, back to you, Dave. Awesome, Martin. Really appreciate that. Excellent job. Mm -hmm.